Thank you for taking the time to watch this PowerPoint presentation of how the star motor works with the jewel box hybrid generators. The 60 kilowatt jewel box generator is illustrated uh, showing two speed control motors. Those are the two black motors at the top and the blower motor on the right hand side that is surrounded by the blue blower. All three of these are star motors that are ultra efficient, high quality and proprietary motors to this technology. We start off with the blower motor that is sending high pressure wind into the wind turbine that is turning a center shaft. We found out that once the wind turbine gets up to full speed, it uses very little additional power to maintain that speed. So, so on the bottom right, you can see that we added a 30 kilowatt DC generator to the blower motor. And this 30 kilowatt DC generator keeps the lithium ion battery bricks in the bottom left hand corner fully charged at all times. This is this, this gives us 30 kilowatts to, to run all three motors, the two speed control motors and the blower motor. Now each motor is, is only drawing about 8,000 watts from the battery brick. And I've had a lot of people say, but you cannot create 40 horsepower from 8,000 watts. That's true. Uh, but that's all we need from the battery. What we do is we get, get the additional power elsewhere, which I will be showing you. Now, as, as you can see, all of these are, are connected together through a gear box, which is the tan uh, square box between the two speed control motors. Now, that has synthetic oil in it that has to be changed according to the gearbox manufacturer once every three years. But we say to change it every year. But that's the only time during the year that we need to shut the system down is to take the plug out of the top, the one out of the bottom, drain it out, put a, put a fresh half liter in there, and, and then start it right back up. This is high viscosity synthetic oil. And, and the third leg of, of that gearbox is connected to the 60 kilowatt AC generator that is in the middle on the bottom that is pictured in gray. So that 60 kilowatt AC generator, that is the net output. The net output is, is through this synchronous AC generator um, that that will be turning at 1500 RPMs to produce 50 Hertz and and it, it has an automatic voltage regulator in it so that so that it's producing very high quality but but we still take that power that's coming out of that and run it through the power queue which is our our power quality uh, box that is that is pictured on the left hand side and and that's going to increase the the power factor to a 97 to 98 percent power factor uh, all, uh, along with providing the the THD or or total harmonic distortion of less than five percent so the the power that is being produced is the highest quality possible the key to it is how we create the horsepower that is going to turn all three, three of these motors on a continuous basis 24-7. Horsepower is torque times RPM divided by 5252. Now everybody wants to know what's, what's the watts in, what's the watts out. But nothing in the formula on, on horsepower says anything about watts in, watts out, but that's just historically the way motor manufacturers 
have created more torque and more RPM. If they need more torque, they just pump in more watts, and, and that naturally will give them more horsepower. But that's not the only way to do it. One horsepower equals 746 watts. So, so on a typical conventional motor that is 40 horsepower, you're, you're going to look to to get about 30,000 watts of work out of it. Let's assume it's a 95% it's a efficient motor. That means 5% is lost in, in the mechanical loss within the motor. So most m traditional motor manufacturers would add that 5% that, that's going to be lost or 1,500 watts to the watts in that is shown on the left hand side there at 31,500. Now, it's not watts in and watts out though that is taking place with, with any motor. There is, there, there's a, an advantage that is, that, that is obtained with every motor. The problem is most motors just lo lose that advantage in the form of heat. So we got 31,500 watts in. We've got 1,500 of that that is, that, that is lost. And the other 30,000 is converted into EMF or electromotive force. And that's what's going to push the motor forward. Now, Lentz's law says that wherever you have EMF, you have an equal and opposite back EMF. So that's 30,000 watts. And, and those, th those go in, in opposite direction. And in most motors, that back EMF is converted into heat and is lost. And, and they just don't calculate that. But, but we certainly know that it takes place because if you've ever tried to touch the top of a 40 horsepower motor under full load, they, 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 they run at between... 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. So that, that cannot be explained with the 1,500 um, loss be from, 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 from the 5% inefficiencies um, because 1,500 watts, that's a hairdryer. And, and, and if I put a hairdryer on the bottom side of a big 40-horsepower motor with a half-inch uh, solid steel casing that's acting as a heat sink, um, there's no way that the top of it would ever get hot. The only way that it gets hot is because it is taking that back EMF and converting it into heat. And you still get 30,000 worth of work out of it. So the mo motor manufacturers have taken the position for years that that's too complicated to explain to their customers. So, so they just say the EMF and the back EMF cancel each other out, so they're not going to count them. But, but of course, that's not what's, what's taking place. Um, but, but it's much easier for them to calculate just what's in, what's out, and, and then compare themselves to all the other available motors. But we, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed, uh, and that's according to the laws of thermodynamics and the conservation of energy. And, and because of that, if, if we can grab hold of that energy in the back EMF before it's converted to heat and combine that with the 8,000 watts that, that we take from the battery uh, shown in the bottom left, that gives us 38,000 watts to get 30,000 worth of work out of it. Now, capturing that back EMF is something that, that um, was not possible five years ago. It, it's the high speed, high voltage, high amperage switches, silicon carbide switches, that have only been available for about five years that allow us to 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 redirect and and to in in essence capture the back EMF um, 
and and that's how we 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 are able to produce thirty thousand worth of work out with a forty horse power motor only using eight thousand watts from the battery because we're we're combining that with the thirty eight thousand watts from the back EMF. The the next picture shows the inside of the star motor and during the assembly process. And what you see there are 10 inch stacks of laminations of electrical steel. Now this is electrical steel that is that is the same stuff that is used to make transformers. And, and, and it's got little silicon lines print, printed on each sheet. Now, that 10-inch stack is, is over 1,000 in individual pieces that are, that are laminated together. So the size of the magnetic field that's being carried inside of this, this motor is absolutely huge. The next picture shows shows the inside of the motor with the six windings. Um, and, and in between each one of the windings, you, you can see an NS there uh, at, at about uh, 7 o'clock, at 9 o'clock, and at about um, 10 or 11 o'clock. You, you can see the north-south. Now, those are permanent magnets. They, they are N50 neodymium permanent magnets. And each one is strong enough to pick up 1,000 pounds. There are, there are uh, the, those are installed in pairs, one on top of the other. Uh, and, and it's a total of 12, 12 magnets in, in the six locations in between each coil. Now, I'll, I'll try and explain how, how the flux is, is directed in this motor, which is unlike any other type of motor. Uh, and this is a 6-4 switch reluctance motor. You, you can see the, the stator has four poles on it, and then there's, there's four blank spaces there. If, if the point on the right-hand side of, of the blank space, right between the blank and, and, and the solid, is right in the middle of the V that's in front of the coil, then, then that's when we turn the charge on to the coil. What takes place at, at that point is the magnetic coil flux travels down the stator arm on, on the right-hand side. And that's, that's because that's, that's the only place that it can travel because on the left-hand side of the stator, and, and, and I'm talking about the coil that's at about 8 o'clock, uh, the, the side of the stator on the left-hand side of the coil would would be facing an an open space in the rotor so so it can't travel down that path but as it travels down the stator arm on the right hand side of the coil it passes by the permanent magnet and it and the magnetic coil flux is combined with the permanent magnet flux to create a dual flux that, that, that then goes into the rotor and is creating the torque that is causing that to turn. Now, with, with our sensors and our optical timing, as when, when, when it's about halfway through that cycle or, 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 or that solid space, uh, then, then we turn the charge to the coil off. And at that point, the, the back EMF wants to go back into the coil. But, but because of the magnets on either side of the coil and, and the solid steel lamination stack that's on the inside of the coil, um, 
and that is a solid steel path that is going to direct the back EMF back up the stator arm, across the crossbar to, to the stator arm on the left-hand side, where it's being pulled over there by, by the magnet that's at 9 o'clock. By, by redirecting the back EMF over to the next coil prior to it, to it going back into the coil, we, we can reuse that energy when it's time to charge the next coil, which is at roughly 10 o'clock. And, and then we, we, we just repeat that process as it goes round and round and round. On, on the next slide, you'll see the formula for horsepower is torque, which is created by that dual flux. And, 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 and we get that maximum torque by reaching maximum saturation of the core um, as fast as possible. The maximum saturation is at 20,000 gauss. Gauss is, of course, the, the measurement of the magnetic field. The permanent magnet has a per, the permanent magnet flux has a gauss field of 15,000 gauss. So we only have to add 5,000 more gauss uh, from the magnetic coil flux, which we do with the 8,000 watts that we take from the battery. So it's 8,000 watts from the battery that is converted through the magnetic coil into the magnetic coil flux of a, a 5,000 gauss field. And, and, and together that, that gives us maximum saturation, which gives us maximum torque. The next slide shows the BH curve. Now we want to get to the high side of the BH curve that's, that's shown on the left-hand side as fast as possible. That gives us the maximum torque. So when we start off on the uh, right-hand side at point D, uh, then, then, then we go up to the high side at point A when we turn on the charge to the coil. When we turn the charge off to the coil, then the, the back EMF wants to go right back down from A back to D to the point that it started. And all the white space in between is the heat loss that is taking place within the motor. Now, people have tried to destroy the back EMF for the past 150 years. That cannot be done because energy cannot be destroyed. But with a strong enough magnet, what we can do is to push that back EMF over to the next coil. Now, it's, it's going to wind up at, at point D, but it's going to wind up at point D one coil over where it can be reused. The next slide shows a thermal photograph of our motor. And, and what you see on, on the top right is, is a, a photograph prior to operation showing about 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, then then the, the bottom two photographs are after running for 45 minutes the, the motor gets up to a temperature of about 29 degrees Celsius. Now, most motors would, would be at between 80 to 100 degrees operating under full load. Uh, and and, and they, they can operate at that uh, without any, any problem. But a two, two degree rise is nothing, it, especially since... Um, since this was under full load and with a load bank in the room, basically the, the ambient temperature just, just went up that much. Well, if, if we don't lose it to heat, 
then 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 we we are much more efficient and 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 we can use that energy um, without without creating any additional heat. The next slide um, just shows the the location of the neodymium magnets and uh, some some you can see with the north south some are under the the red plates there. The 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 next slide shows horsepower equals torque, which which we covered with the dual flux, and 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 now we come to the RPM. Now, the the back EMF is one hundred percent resistance. The next slide shows how we take that back EMF and with our neodymium magnets, we, we push it over to the next coil where that can be reused. Well, if, if, if you redirect the resistance and, and, and you're reducing that resistance, you're naturally going to get more RPM without using more watts, actually by using less watts. Now the laws of thermodynamics and the conservation of energy, I've, I've had people say that, 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 that we violate that. We absolutely do not violate that. We, we absolutely agree. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is just there. And and what it can be is conserved and not converted into heat and therefore reused. And there's no such thing as a perpetual motion machine. Even the earth itself that is spinning constantly is not perpetual motion. Uh, when, when the earth loses its magnetic core, which is estimated going to be in 10 to 20 billion years, the earth is going to stop. It's actually slowing down now. Now, our, our permanent magnets ha have, a, have a full life for uh, about 100 years with a partial life for 200 to 300 years. But, but a after 100 years, we're, we're not going to have enough strength in our magnets to, to be able to, to continue. So we are not perpetual motion. Also, the laws of thermodynamics and the conservation of energy only applies to a closed system. Now, a permanent magnet or any magnetic field can never be a closed system. If, if you look at this illustration of a, of a magnet, on the north end of the magnet, on, on the edges to the top and the bottom, you, you can see that the, the flux is redirected and loops back into the south side. Uh, but, but on the right-hand side of the north end of the magnet, then, then you see that there is energy going out into space. Uh, and, and, and that is not looped back into the south side. That is just lost. But on the south side, there is there's energy that is constantly coming into that magnet for the period of time that that, that magnet uh, can maintain its strength. So with the neodymium magnets, uh, those, those will maintain their strength for about 100 years. So, so this is this is never a closed system, and and is constantly uh, charging itself from outside of of the jewel box itself. Also, there's there there's something unique that takes place whenever you combine a permanent magnet with an electromagnet. So, so. When we turn the charge on to the coil and, and, and send the magnetic coil flux down the stator arm, um, 
that energy that that was going out of the north side out into space is is redirected and and grabs hold of the permanent magnet flux and pulls it together with the magnetic coil flux so so what was typically lost into space is 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 now usable by combining it with the magnetic coil flux you still get the the energy coming into it from the south side but 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 you are redirecting it it kind of works out like one plus one equals about two and a half be be because you are eliminating that loss that takes place. Now, even though we're, we're not a um, closed system, we still have to be in balance with the laws of physics. One horsepower equals 746 watts. That's 0.746 kilowatts. On our 60 kilowatt jewel box, generator we have three 40 horsepower star star motors so that's a total of 120 horsepower on the shaft that is turning a 30 kilowatt dc generator and a 60 kilowatt synchronous ac generator so that's a total of 90 kilowatts well 90 is 0 0.750 of 120 so we're at 0 0.750. Absolute unity would be 0 0.746. Uh, so we're at about 99.6 percent, which which is extraordinary, but it but it is not something uh, that is wildly o over unity. Uh, we we are just able to create that horsepower uh, by by using the back EMF the the way it has never been done previously. I I hope that answers all all of your questions. And uh if if you have any additional questions I'll I'll be glad to answer those for you. Thank you very much.